you gave a D minus the economists. So are they too like the politicians to wash in terms of there's good ideas and bad ideas and and that tiny delta between good and and bad is how you squeak past the F plus onto the D minus territory? I think most economic ideas are bad ideas. Like most. They're, you know, like, um, take us back to MIT and you want to solve uh, a fluid dynamics problem, like like design the shape of the hull of that ship, mm -hmm. or you want to design a, an airfoil, a wing, or if you want to design uh, an engine or a, 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 a nozzle in a rocket ship, you wouldn't do it with simple arithmetic. You wouldn't do it with a scalar. There's not a single number, right? It's, vect it's vector math. You know, computational fluid dynamics is n-dimensional, higher level math, you know, complicated stuff. So when, when an economist says the inflation rate is 2%, that's a scalar. And when an economist says it's not a problem to print more money because the velocity of the money is very low, the monetary velocity is low, that's another scalar. Okay, so the truth of the matter is Inflation is not a scalar. Inflation is an n-dimensional vector. Money velocity is not a scalar. Um, the saying, what's the velocity of money? Oh, oh, it's slow or it's fast. It ignores the question of what medium is the money moving through? Mm -hmm. In the same way that, you know, what's the speed of sound? Okay, well, what is sound, right? <laughs> Sound, you know, sound is uh, is a, a compression wave. It's energy uh, moving through a medium, but the speed is different. So, for example, the speed of sound through air is different than the speed of sound through water. And and a sound moves faster through water. It moves faster through a solid, and it moves faster through a stiffer solid. So there isn't one. What is the fundamental problem with the way economists reduce the world down to a model? Is it too simple? Or is it just even the first principles of constructing the model is wrong? I think that uh, the fundamental problem is if you see the world as a scalar, you simply pick the one number which is which supports whatever you want to do, and you ignore the universe of other consequences from your behavior. In general, I don't know if you've heard of... Um... The Eric Weinstein has been talking about this with gauge theory. So different different kinds of approaches from the physics world, from the mathematical world to extend past this scalar view of economics. So gauge theory is one way that comes from physics. Do you find that a way of exploring economics interesting? So outside of cryptocurrency, outside of the actual technologies and so on, just uh, analysis of how economics works. Do you find that interesting? Yeah, I, I think that if we're going to want to really make any scientific progress in economics, we have to apply much, much more computationally intensive and richer forms of mathematics. So than, simulation, perhaps? or Yeah, you know, when I was at MIT, I studied system dynamics. Uh, you know, they taught it at the Sloan School. It was developed by Jay Forrester, who, who um, was an extraordinary computer scientist. and. Um, when we created models of economic behavior, they were all multidimensional, nonlinear models. So if you want to describe how anything works in the real world, you have to start with the concept of feedback. If I double the price of something, demand will fall and attempts to, to create supply will increase and there will be a delay before the capacity increases There'll be an instant demand uh, change, and there'll be rippling effects throughout every other segment of the economy, downstream and upstream of such thing. So it's kind of common sense, but most economics, most classical economics, it's always, you know, taught with linear models, you know, fairly simplistic linear models. And oftentimes, even I'm really shocked today that the entire uh, mainstream dialogue of economics has been captured by scalar arithmetic. For example, if, if you read, uh, you know, read any article in the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal, right, they just refer to it, there's an inflation number or the, the CPI or the inflation rate is X. And if you look at all the historic studies of the impact of inflation, 
generally, they're all based upon the idea that inflation equals CPI, and then they try to extrapolate from that, and you just get nowhere with it. So at the very least, we should be considering inflation and other economics concept as a nonlinear dynamical system. So nonlinearity and also just embracing the full complexity of just how the variables interact, maybe through simulation, maybe some have some interesting models around that. Wouldn't it be refreshing if somebody for once published a table of the change in price of every product, every service, and every asset in every place over time? 